Welcome to Disrupt the Drift. I am Baron Baptiste, and we are here disrupting the norm, the status quo. It's a place where we can tell the truth and the truth can be told. We have a question today, and it, it should be of interest to you. If you're dealing with not being real, like the real you with people, if you find yourself wearing masks, wearing a different mask for different people, you'll want to hear what we have to share today. It's potent. It's important. And if you have the ears to hear it and really listen with an open mind, it could change your life. So here's the question. I feel like I'm not myself and have a different face for different people. How can I cultivate the courage and awareness needed to recognize and confront my inauthenticities, ensuring I am truly genuine and consistent with who I want to be both to others and myself? It's good. It's good, man. This is a very good, important question because when you live a not real you, version of you, you lose your freedom, you lose your lightness of being, you lose the light in your eyes, you lose power, you lose the ability to just be yourself, to be free to be and free to act. Um, David, what, what's here for you? What do you see? I believe that we've all inherited a duality of identities. One uh, has a blueprint for success. The other one has a blueprint for unhappiness and misery. And the question is, if you could step back for a minute and draw a diagram on a piece of paper, where are you in that place of whether or not you have been giving into following the wrong path? See, because that's where it all begins. Actually, if you see that you have followed the wrong blueprint, that's when your life begins to make sense. Because you always wonder, why can't I do certain things? Why can't I get certain things right? How is it that I always allow people to take advantage of me? Why do I get upset with myself and other people? If you step back for a minute and ask yourself this critical question, am I on the wrong path? And some voice in you comes back, some knowing says to you, yeah, you are. There's something more for you. There's a better life waiting for you. There's better choices that you can make. You're already on the right path in that moment. but. Now there's a, a challenge. The challenge is, can you stay on the right path? Now, there's moments in time that we all have moments of clarity where we go, oh, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm done. Have you ever heard yourself say that? Yeah. yeah. I am done with this. But then somehow there well, is a that, force. That's, a, that's an inauthentic <laughs> right there. That's okay. not genuine, right? That's not a genuine self. Speak that to one it. that's like crying out, I'm done. I can't do this. I don't want to. Reminds me when I was a kid, I think these kind of masks we put on, these identities we develop that, that take us away from ourselves, I think they start happening pretty young. I remember being pretty young, I don't know, 10 years old maybe. And my dad was someone who he was a leader in the community. People admired him. He had a lot of just natural wisdom and he was really into support, helping people and contributing to people. And I, I remember at around 10 years old, it, it dawned on me. I was watching him and people interacting with him. And he was so being so great with people. And I was like, I could never be like that. Mm. I could never be like that. It was so natural to him. But, but in that moment, when I thought I, I could never be like that, I determined I'm going to have to figure it out. I'm going to have to do things right because it's not going to come natural to me like my dad. It, it's I have to f do things right. I have to figure it out. And that's been a very crippling way of being in life because overthinking everything, over preparing, trying to get things right instead of just free to be free to act free kind of in my self-expression. And but that's an identity. And then living that way is totally inauthentic to myself, and then even other people interacting with me. And I think that being authentic about, let's dig in here a little bit about, okay, how do we get on that true path that you mentioned? Okay, being on the right path or the true path, your true path. How do we get on that true path? And I say it's the truth. The truth sets us free from what? From all of these inauthenticities. 
to start telling the truth. But first, got to wake up. You start to have to really start acknowledging, like the person who sent in this question, you're aware of these inauthenticities, these little areas where you're like not being, you're, you're pretending you're going along with people saying that things are one way or you're one way. You're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. When really you're a mess inside or you're upset inside or you're angry inside, or you're afraid inside. But we put up these fronts and to start waking up and saying, wait, I'm being inauthentic and it's costing me my life. It's costing me freedom. It's costing me the light in my eyes. So be willing to discover and confront your inauthenticities when in those real moments, when you're interacting with people or just when you're contemplating your own life, start telling the truth. Where are you not being genuine, real and authentic and tell the truth about it and specifically where in your life you're not being or acting consistent with who you hold yourself out to be to others who you and where you're not being or acting consistent with who you hold yourself to be for yourself mm. because right there you can wake up you can get aware and if you can see something you say oh wait right there i put i just told that person my partner my husband my wife my kid my boss my employee I just said something and it was a front. It was, I was just trying to look good in their eyes or people please or get approval. I'm putting on a PR campaign. Look, when you're not being yourself, you're always putting on this big PR campaign to manage people's perceptions. That's exhausting. You, it costs something. It costs freedom. It costs joy. But be willing to tell the truth about where you're not being genuine, real, or authentic. And last thing I'll say, just more actionably, be authentic about your inauthenticities. And first, tell the truth on yourself. Tell Maybe there are people in your life you've been pretending with, you've been phony with. Maybe you need to, it's going to take some courage and your knees may shake, but you start telling the truth, come what may, because yeah. the only way out is through All right. truth. So, Baron, let's say that you were born in China. Yeah. Would you be the Baron that you are right now, right here with me? Yeah, probably not. Right, you Our environment you forms us. Be. Right. Yeah. We are all in a suspended. Not that we couldn't be. The possibility is there. But right. we get morphed. But yeah, you were shaped. Look, look at how I, I love the way you speak about your father. I, I had a great father, too. I, I loved my dad in a way I feared him because he was a multifaceted person, just like your dad was. But I love the way you talk about your dad because you looked up to him and yeah. you learned from him. And so part of that shaped most of what shaped you is an environmental force that surrounds you. And then it sculpts you. Now, there are parts of you that you have inherited genetically, and there's parts of you that have come to you through interactions with people who were not necessarily your friends, who tried to hurt you and tried to control your destiny so that you would end up like they are. And they didn't even know they were doing it. But my point is that whatever environment has done to us, that's the first key. We have to look at what we have become as a result of interacting with that environment. Yeah. And who, who I, we, I like calling it who we wound up being. Yeah, who that's we good. wound up being, not intentional, but we wound up being a certain way. So have you ever and seen If you a don't stage, like it, start waking up to it. Yeah. Have you ever seen a stage hypnotist work on a person to get them to do silly things that they would never otherwise do? Yeah. So there... Th what I'd like to do is equate this environmental conditioning to a form of hypnosis. When you start to dehypnotize by becoming aware, see, you, you've not only did you not know that you were giving the world that you lived in permission to shape and form and sculpt you into whatever it is that world determined you would be, uh, but you were compelled to do that you were, because we are all subject to the environment that we come into. And we are dependent upon that environment. Now, when it comes to people-pleasing, 
and not representing ourselves and having a different face for every other person, that's because every time we come in contact with somebody, we have an adapt uh, uh, program that causes us to become chameleons so that we fit in. And that is a desire to be loved and accepted. So what happens is there's going to come a point where you actually have to make a determination. There's two things you have to determine who you want to be compared to who you don't want to be. And then you have to realize I am not the person that I've always thought I was. And that's okay. It's not bad or wrong, but wake up to it's yeah. not who I want to be. That's yeah. the point right there. Yeah. Because if you can begin that process of saying, this is not who I want to be. And I call it the conscious process of elimination. I don't ever have a problem ordering in a restaurant because I go in and I go, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. And what's left is what I want. So begin that conscious process of elimination of saying, I don't want to be this person to that person. I want to be one person. I want to be the person that I am meant to be, whatever yeah. that means. Go ahead. Yeah. Without judgment, without all the opinions, without all the make wrong, it's, it just is what it is and wake up to it. And be, in being authentic here, you all, if you're watching on YouTube, will you please this video? It helps us a lot. It helps with the algorithms to push this uh, video out. I had to be authentic and say that. <laughs> So I have a, from Harvard, I have an article here, a quote pulled from an article from the Harvard Business Review. It's called Teaching Smart People How to Learn. And it's quoting Harvard professor Chris Argyris, who after 40 years of studying us human beings on the subject of our inauthenticity says, put simply, people consistently act inconsistently unaware of the contradiction between their espoused theory and their theory in use between the way they think they are acting and the way they really act. Very interesting. I think if, if any of us don't see elements of ourselves in that, you're fooling yourself about fooling yourself. <laughs> Wait, I have a question here and we need to wrap up in a sec, but in a minute, but the question is, are you being authentic? And most of us think of ourselves as being authentic. We just do. We, we think, what do you mean, Baron? Of course I'm authentic. However, each of us in certain situations and with certain people, certain circumstances, each of us in certain ways is consistently inauthentic. And we don't know that. And we don't know that we don't know that. We're not present to it. And because we avoid at all costs confronting our inauthenticities, we're not being real, where we're pretending, where we're hiding, where we're dressing things up, where we're pretending to be someone or to be a certain way, to be happy, to be successful, to be yeah on this PR campaign. But if we avoid, and we avoid, Typically, human beings, I'm pretty good. If some, it, I have blind, certainly unmeasurable amounts of blind spots. But if someone is straight with me and points it out to me, I want to know. I want to discover for myself these blind spots of where I'm not being real or genuine or authentic. And, but it takes something at all costs. Your default is to avoid confronting your inauthenticities. And we're consistently inauthentic about being inauthentic, not only with others, but with ourselves as well. Yeah. But listen, yeah, here's yeah. the idea. Okay. If we don't know who we really are, yeah. as this person has written in, I have a face for a different face for everybody. Well, okay, how do you be authentic to that? Because the word authentic actually means being so in fact, not fraudulent or counterfeit. If you don't know who you are, that's where the process of conscious elimination begins, where you start to see yourself and feel uncomfortable about how you put on a different face for everybody. I know when I was in my mid-20s, I was going through this crisis of self, and I wanted to figure out who I was supposed to be all the time. Mm. And so I would go to a party, and sometimes I felt very uncomfortable, and I would go out and sit in the backyard and look through the glass doors and watch everybody going on. Sometimes people would come out to me. And say, hey, what are you doing out here? And I, it, what's wrong with you? And I'd say, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just going through this awakening process. I try to yeah. explain it to them. But what I saw was I didn't fit in there. 
So well, yeah. eventually I just had to go right? outside and then I would leave and go home. And I would, it, there's yeah. a process you have to go through. You do. And it conf it's confronting. Yes. Because all of a sudden you're in environments with your usual friends or people or shallow situations or where people are just being shallow. And you tell they're pretending. It, it just, inauthenticity, it rings it, something false. Authenticity rings true. It's got gold in it, right? Mm, but yeah. It's got truth. It's enlivening. It, it, it causes aliveness. It has its own kind of energy, but there's a deadness that comes when people are just pretending they're being phony, they're being false, the fraudulent. But if you cannot find the courage to be authentic about your inauthenticities, you can forget about being a leader, about being true to yourself, about living true for you and for anyone else. So being authentic, no. Being not real, being inauthentic, it you strangles go. your energy. You there lose you the light in your eyes. It translates into weight, energetic weight. But when you're being authentic and you find that courage and you confront it, suddenly it's like a straitjacket. I've had that experience so many times when I suddenly wake up to I've been going along to get along or just play it safe and fit in. And, and it's like, Suddenly, when you start telling the truth about it, just to yourself, it, you get set free. That straitjacket drops and you get your life back. If you attempt to be authentic, here's something, and then we're going to wrap up. But if you pretend to be authentic, like on social media, <laughs> you see all these influencers being authentic, and they're even telling all their dramas and yada, yada, in the name of being authentic. It's more inauthenticity. It, it smell. It reeks of that. You, look, if if you're a seeking soul, you know what I'm talking about. But if you attempt to be authentic on top of all these inauthenticities, it's like putting frosting, cake frosting, on a dung pie on cow dung, <laughs> and thinking that somehow it'll make the cow dung go down smoother. That pie. <laughs> But yeah, being wow. authentic takes courage. And if you I, do it, you'll yeah. lose thousands of pounds of energetic weight and gain I will just, new lightness of being. That's my promise. Yeah. yeah. I want to say it's okay. And it's empowering, as Baron just said, to realize that you don't know who you are. Yeah. It's so Not bad or liberating. Wrong. Actually, it's, that's the first step. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I don't know who I am. Who am I? And yeah. if you have a problem, I'm not being myself. Yeah. If you have a problem remembering what I just said, just go back and look up the word authentic in the dictionary. And it says being so, in fact, not fraudulent or counterfeit. Hmm. Do those words apply to you? If so, then step back a moment, say, Look, I don't know who I am. And that's the beginning of something amazing right there. Yeah, it's so good. I'll just add being inauthentic and being phony, it, it's not bad or wrong. But it costs you something. Yeah. It's just there's leather, which is r the real genuine article. And then there's pleather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, is pleather bad and wrong? No. <laughs> I mean, to some people, maybe it is. <laughs> pleather, it's just not real. And then, and, but to be the real article, it's like you, you get to be who you are. And it opens up a whole world of possibilities and yeah. opportunities and grace. And you start moving and flowing and having your being from a whole new place and space. And you become a different kind of uh, magnet. So thank you all uh, for listening this far into it. If you're watching on YouTube, please, again, this video, subscribe, leave comments, send your questions in. We love getting your questions. Send them into Disrupting the Drift at BaronBaptiste.com. And be well, stay strong, stay bold, keep disrupting and rising above the drift. Challenge the norm. And this is Baron Baptiste signing off. Until next time, stay true, stay bold, stay blessed, and peace be with you.